So welcome back to another Flask tutorial. In this tutorial, we're actually going to write some uh, Python Flask code. Uh, we're going to talk about route, render template, and how to actually run in your Flask app. So by now, we should have Flask dependency installed into our environment. By the way, if you haven't watched the first tutorial, you can watch the first one. We'll just open up a new terminal. If you are in Visual Studio Code, you can um, choose to click on Terminal, click on New Terminal, and then, yeah, should get set up. And then you can type pip install uh, flask. For me, I need to add to hyphen user, I don't know why. Or you can also use pip3 if you are a Mac slash Linux user. Um, all these should do the work for you. I'm just gonna install again. That's fine. Because I already installed it so you can see requirement already satisfied. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and then first, it's not actually create a Python app. We're going to create a file called requirements.txt. Requirements.txt. So what's this? So what is this text for? Well, this is for install dependency in Python. So recall that what we just did is it, we just installed flash dependency. But when you gradually add more dependency and then you want to eventually deploy it, you cannot just tell, okay, we need to like you need to execute all these commands. Well, you can organize them into a requirements.txt, which is standard like a Python dependency text file. And then you can just run a single command. It's going to run all the dependency that's listed in here. Uh, so what you will do for now, is just put flask in it. And then what you can try to run is pip or pip3 install dash r requirements dot txt. And then if you run this, you can see it did exactly the same thing. Maybe not exact. Yeah, it is exactly the same thing. And then just install the Flask dependency for you. So we have a lot of dependencies. Let's say you use ten dependencies. You can. You don't have to run ten individually. You just. Can, you can just run the above command, which will run, which will install. If not yet installed, other dependency in this file. All right. So this is just a quick requirement. Uh, uh, intro to requirements.txt. We'll talk more about them, especially when we actually deploy our Flask app to the online server. Um, but yeah, for now, you got requirements.txt set up, and now let's take a look how to create a Flask app. So now you can go ahead and create a new file, and um, you can call this app.py. Well, you can call this practically anything you want. But make sure you replace anywhere and type app.py to your own Python file name. Um, all right. So first, what we will do is I will type all these comments, all these code first. Then we explain it. What am I doing? All right, so what is this happening here? I'm going to explain line by line, okay? Including line three, by the way. Uh, so on line one, you're import, importing Flask class. So this is a class from the Flask module. And then in line two, you're creating a new instance of the Flask class store it in a variable called app but inside you can see take a parameter called two underscore name two underscore so from class if you watch that my uh op in python you will know that this is like a, um this is like a built-in class so this uh underscore underscore name underscore underscore it's a little bit complex to explain but um this is just to reference the current Python file. Um, you don't need to know exactly how it works underneath the hood, but this just reference to the file that you're work, currently working with, which is app.py, 
line 3, empty line, move on to line 4. So, line 4, you're creating a decorator, which is similar to a function, um, but this is built into Flask. So, you will see this taking one parameter here. It's a string, because it's how quote. But what, what is this for? Well, this means which route do you, should you access to will give you this, will run this function. So we'll talk more when they actually run in the file. Next is your defining function, and these two are just a function uh, statement return statement. So you are return a string, it's called hello world, so comma and an exclamation mark. This is the ultimate output of this function. All right, so uh, this is all these six lines, or practically five lines. Uh, what are we doing? And then, and then, well, so now we understand. How, at least we should. You should be able to understand a little bit. Maybe not these two lines, but you will know as uh, as you get used to it. So how to run in a Flask app? Well, now I'm going to scroll up my terminal a little bit. Uh, oh, I can make it bigger. I should make it bigger. Sorry. Yeah, I should make it bigger. But not too big. All right. So in here, so what we'll, we'll type is uh, we'll type the following command. So we'll go ahead and add the comments to this Python file. This is the first way if you want to run it. Uh, is if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals uh, underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Then can I say app dot run. no parameter. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Right. So. Uh, what this line is doing is, as you know, that's unlike most of the file, which, um, uh, well, uh, unlike like C or a Go, they have a main function. Python don't really have a main function. So this just mean well, does have a, like a sort of main function, but you need to check it. So when the name is equals equals to main, you can run this file. We'll talk about this in like, separate tutorial. And now in your terminal, you can type python3 app.py. And now you should see something similar to this. Serving flask app, app lazy loading, we're gonna explain this later. The environment is production. Actually, I want, we want to set it to development, but for now it's fine. Um, we use, uh, use a production WSGI server instead. Not gonna worry about that just yet. Debug mode is off. And this is the ultimately the most important line of all. So running on uh, HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. This is like the standard port for a Flask app. So now what you can do is, I know you can follow the link, but I'm just going to open a new browser. Uh, so let me go ahead and add a terminal here. And now if you click on here, and what you see is hello world. Now let's go back to route. Notice that we just visited this. How suppose it knows it's like the, which route to uh, render? Well, because you got the, actually have an end slash at the end. So this uh, run the index function. If you have some other route like hello, like this, you're gonna see a, a like a 404 not found because we didn't implement that route yet. So this is the route four. Make sure to start with a trilling slash, a backward slash, always. Um, yeah. So this is the first way you can run a Flask app. Uh, you can see there also have some log here. Uh, you can see it's a get. We're going to talk about, H if you watch my API tutorial, you should know get is an HTTP response. Um, and then it's HTTP 1.1, 200. 200 status code is everything's okay. Uh, get slash, so we visit this route again. 
And then we visit, you can see a yellow here, say get slash hello, which returned a 404 error. Um, but that's fine, so we didn't implement that route yet. And now to quit, you can type control C uh, to quit a Python app. Um, yeah, to quit actually any Python app, or most, that's how you quit it. Okay. So let me go ahead and remove these two lines. And now what we'll do is we will run the following command. We will use uh, environment variable instead. Let me make it. Okay, I can't. So we'll run uh, using uh, environment variable instead. So what is environment variable? Is this is like a, it's a some way to store some secret uh, credentials. So for example, if you are in Windows, run this. So you can say set flask app all cap with an underscore equals your file name like app.py. Well, it apparently it can also do it in Mac, but that's how you do on Windows. Set flask underscore app all capitalized um, equals app.py. And if you are in Windows, uh, if you're in Mac or Linux, you just need to change set to export. Rest of the uh, rest of the rest of the stuff is the same. And now what you can do is uh, whether with whatever OS you are in, whatever whatever OS you can in, you can just run Flask run, and you should see a similar. Uh, you should see a similar. It's not similar exactly the same as the name uh, as the name equals main one. All right, so well that was fun. At least you can whoops. At least you can see some like basic HTML. But what if you want to um you want to render a HTML page? So you actually can type HTML here. Uh, here so. And for now, what I will do is I will run a similar command. It's called flash debug. So it's going to auto reload every time when I make a change. So let's go flask run this. I can see it's giving me a pin number. And now if I go to here, let me drag it closer. Now you can see it's in uh, H1 tag. But, well, this is not really a great way to do it, especially when we have complicated HTML. So what can we do instead is actually re render in. Uh, by the way, you can see it's restarting. restarting. So what we can do is we're going to import a function called render template. Whoops. Uh, called render template. And now what we'll do, now what we'll do is in I'm just gonna create a new route. Let's just say at at the route, say slash HTML, def HTML. So what I would say is return render template. Let's say index HTML. All right. So um, because it's keep reloading, but when you now go to a slash HTML. You can see there should be an error, it's called Jinja2. You don't need to worry about what is Jinja2 mean just yet. Because we're not going to deal with that, but you can just say, okay, template not found. So that makes sense because we didn't have an index.html. But can I just create index.html like in here? Unfortunately, I can't. What I must do is I need to create a directory called templates under your um, Python directory, and then here what we say is let's just create index.html, and now what we can type is doc type HTML, HTML head body h1. It's really exactly the same thing, and then if you run this, you can see it's a little bit different. It does have a little bit margin. Because if you open up your Quorum developer tool, you can see we actually have a proper HTML tags here. All right, so that will be it for um, this tutorial.
which I hope you found it informative, useful, and have a little bit of understanding what is Flask. Uh, how could you use use it? Um, so we talk a little bit about templates, and uh, we will talk more on templates in, in next video. So specifically, what if you have a like you use same HTML elements over and over? Could you just somehow export them? And uh, we will talk about some more syntax in Flask. All right, thanks for watching. Have a nice day, nice evening, nice afternoon, nice morning, wherever you live. And again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.